So number nine, after bringing in fill from an outside source prior to the foundation installation, what test would be appropriate? So we have a vein shear test, we have the proctor test, the cylinder test, and slump test. Well, we've already talked about the slump and cylinder test. These are concrete tests, so it's definitely not either of those. And that's these guys down here. There's the slump and the cylinders. Uh, the vein shear test is kind of an interesting one. It's uh, related to these issues, but not in the way that this question actually um, asked about. So the vein shear test is I have a stick. Um, <laughs> it's probably it's more complicated than that, but I'm going to call it a stick. And it's got this sort of little cruciform shape down on the bottom. And I stick that thing down into the ground and then I turn it. Uh, I try to s uh, spin it around. And if it spins very easily, that means there's very little lateral shear capacity in that soil. Well, that would be useful to know if you're using the soil as part of a way to stop uh, the building from sliding or the retaining wall from sliding or something along those lines. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, elements that would be important to know, but that's not what it was asking. What it was asking was, after bringing in fill from outside source prior to the foundation installation, what would be appropriate? Uh, the main thing we're talking about here is actually its compaction level and its ability to uh, uh, sort of withstand the load. So the Proctor test is this interesting thing where a realization got made that there's a strong relationship between the moisture content uh, of the soil and the ability for it to be compacted. And so the Proctor test allows that to uh, be sort of figured out um, that you can uh, uh, it's, a, it's a very simple uh, test that, uh, that tests the, with a, a series of blows and tries, uh, but understands how much moisture is in that, that soil. And they do a whole, a whole bunch of them from that particular kind of soil, and then they find the sort of, uh, the kind of best example. Uh, and then you get a readout that gives you a peak uh, compaction capacity. And then when you're in the field, you're sort of aiming for about 95% of that. So you'll often hear people talk about it's 90% uh, you know, Proctor test, uh, which means it's not quite compacted enough. Or it's 97% uh, Proctor, which means we've compacted even more than we really needed to. Because 95%, yeah, you know, you're so close to 100 that you, this, there's enough going on in the soils. It's not like you're ever going to be perfect in the soil. Um, there's, there's factors of safety built in in all sorts of other ways. Uh, so Proctor test is this, this thing that's uh, figuring out about the compaction. It's related to the moisture content, but you're looking for what the peak compaction capacity is because you want to get it compacted so that nothing moves later. And in the field, you'll usually find that you're aiming for 95% of that peak. Mm -hmm.